What time does your watches say? Look, or anything. So I'm just curious, how many of folks came to January's presentation? You guys are the, like dedicated group. And in February? And were you here at 6.30? <laughs> See? This little cluster, this little nucleus. And then people keep wondering in after that. There's a handout by the door, and there's compasses on the stage if you want to fiddle with them. Fiddle with them. So this is part three of a three-part uh, workshop. Uh, part one in January, we talked about how to take a bearing, or use a bearing, with a compass. So the baseline, we're, we're measuring an angle to a uh, magnetic board in January. In February, we got together and we looked at how to take a bearing off a map. And the baseline on, a, on most maps is true north. And tonight's discussion is about declination, that word that everybody hears related to a compass and kind of freaks out on it. Um, so we're going to talk about declination tonight. And really it's about taking a bearing off a map and then using it in the real world, which creates a problem because as I just said, the map baseline is true north and the compass's baseline is magnetic north. So declination is the difference between those two. But I got ahead of myself, that was a summary. So if you leave now at this point, you now know what we were going to talk about. So there's a handout by the door if you haven't gotten it. All right, so um, I've used this slide in every uh, one of our uh, presentations so far, just to make sure we're on the same page. We're not using the compass that's on the left. We're working with a compass, the kind that's on the right. And that type of compass happens to be called a protractor compass, which is great because a protractor is what you use to measure an angle. And if you think about it, this compass has all the pieces we need to measure an angle. So we're working with the compass type on the right. What the workshop is not about tonight, it's not specifically about how to take a bearing using a compass. We covered that in January. It's not about taking a bearing uh, off a map. We covered that in February. But if you missed either one of those, Larry in the back, back there, has been videotaping all of this. So I believe the videotapes are available. What it is about is this thing called declination and how to handle it. And declination is the difference between magnetic north and true north. And if you use the wrong one at the wrong time, uh, it, it can generate an error in the direction that you're heading, heading in. So that's what we're talking about tonight, this thing called declination. So first we'll talk about the goal, what we would like to do with our compass and map. And then we'll talk about the problem and, and what that problem is uh, that leads us to have to know about declination and then we'll talk about the solution, and there isn't a solution. There are five solutions on how to handle it, and you get to pick the one you like. And I have to admit, when I was first learning about this, uh, I can remember like going to a workshop, and they'd talk about declination, and they'd show us one of those five solutions, and I'd think, I got it, I understand it. And then I'd go somewhere else, and they would use a different solution. And be like, oh, wait a minute, I thought I got this, but now they're doing it a totally different way. And then I'd read a book on it, and of course, they would do it a different way. And finally, it dawned on me, it's one problem, five solutions, five ways that you can deal with declination. So we're going to briefly look at all five solutions. So if anything, when you walk away from here tonight, you may not have a working knowledge of how to do it, but you'll have an awareness of what the problem is, and if you understand the problem, you'll be able to think out what you need to do when the time comes. And then there's five ways you can handle it. We'll look at each of those briefly. Uh, it's all in the handout, by the way. I'll talk more about that later. Okay, so our goal is, think about that you're out in the woods, and you're at some point, and you decide you want to look at the map, and you know where you are on the map because you've been following along. So you know where you are at the map, and let's say that you're at point A on the map. And as you look at the map, you determine a direction you want to go in. And so you take a bearing off the map. So you're at point A, and you decide you want to go towards B, 
So using the compass and the skills that we talked about in the February workshop, you take a bearing off the map. Now you take that bearing and you want to use it to direct yourself. And if you remember from the January workshop, a compass cannot tell you which way to go. All I can do is once you figure out which way you want to go, the compass can keep you headed in that direction. Because if you think about it, any point that you're standing at, you have a choice of 360 degrees of directions to go in. The compass doesn't pick one of those for you. You have to pick it based on where you want to go or what you want to see or et cetera, et cetera. But once you figure out that direction, what the compass can do is keep you moving in that direction. Because you guys know, if you get lost, what do we do when we get lost? We walk in circles, right? So a compass keeps us from walking in circles. It keeps us from going over there or going over there. It keeps us heading in this direction. And if there's a big old pond or a mountain in front of us, and we have to go around that big old pond or mountain, or mountain, the compass will still get, keep us going in the direction that we want to go in. So we get a bearing off the map. And then we say, okay, here we are standing. Now we want to take that bearing. We want to use that bearing to orient ourselves into the direction to go in. Because we know we're standing at A. We want to go towards B. So here we are standing at A. Now we need the compass to direct us of where B is. That's a problem. Because the bearing we took off of there uses true north as a baseline. When you go to use it in the compass, to help you figure out the direction you should go in, the compass uses the baseline of magnetic north. That's the problem. But our goal is we want to be able to take a bearing off the map, and we want to be able to use the bearing with the compass in the world around us. Or vice versa. We want to be able to take a bearing from the world around us and take it over to the map, and given that we know where we are, have the compass be able to show us on our top of map what would be off in that direction if we headed into that direction. So that's our goal. Our goal is we want to be able to take information off the map and use it in the real world or vice versa. Take information from the real world and use it on the map. Feel free to yell out questions if you have any questions. Okay? So that's the goal. Now let's talk about the problem. And I already alluded to the problem. We need a baseline to measure a bearing from. And it's got to be the same baseline in order to be as accurate as possible. But sometimes we have two baselines. Sometimes we have magnetic north, and sometimes we have true north. And I call that fruit juice. So we have apples and oranges instead of just oranges or just apples. OK, a little bit of review from the January presentation, just to make sure we're all on the same page. A bearing is a measurement of an angle in degrees from a baseline to the direction we want to travel in. So this cyan color is the direction we want to travel in. This red line would be our baseline. And here we have a protractor, which maybe that brings up bad memories of math class in high school. And we're going to align that protractor with our baseline. And we measure the angle from the baseline to our direction of travel. We don't need to have uh, a plastic protractor like the one shown in this picture because the compass acts like a protractor. And the baseline on the compass would be magnetic north. So we use the parts of the compass to align, and you'll see that in a minute, um, so that we can take a measurement. So this is also reviewed from uh, actually January and February, because these were the steps for taking a bearing and using a compass in the surrounding world that we talked about in January. And they're also the steps for taking a bearing off a map that we talked about in February, except for this part that's in this box. That changed from January to February. In January, we were talking about the compass, so this was magnetic north. In February, we were talking about the map, so it was what? True north. Yeah. So which north we align to changes depending on whether we're taking the bearing from the real world or we're taking the bearing from the map. So let's see that in an animated uh, PowerPoint here. So this is from January where we talked about taking a bearing with the compass. 
So pretend you're up on a hill somewhere, and you can see a road in the distance, and you want to take a bearing to that road, because in a moment, you're going to be walking down into the trees, and you can't see the road through the trees. Okay? So we're going to follow the acronym that I made up, which is PAN. That's how you take a bearing, P-A-N. So the first step is point, which this little guy is. He's holding the compass in front of him. He's pointing the direction of travel arrow to where he wants to go. A is for align. For the alignment, we're going to align this orienting arrow, which is the one painted on the housing of the compass. So if you took your compass housing right now and turned it, you will see that there is an arrow painted on the bottom that turns, not that floating magnetic one. And also, on either side of that painted arrow, there might be some lines that are parallel to it, depending on your compass. So this is the orienting arrow with the lines parallel to it. Those are painted on the housing. So as you turn the housing, that arrow, those lines move. And this is the direction of travel arrow that's pointing to where we want to go. So we're going to align this orienting arrow to the magnetic north arrow by turning the compass housing. Not your body, not the compass, but the compass housing. So it looked like this in the PowerPoint. That only took an hour to get that to do that. <laughs> <laughs> then I got smarter. So now that they're lined up, we have our protractor. Because the third step is N, number. Read the number. You read the number where the direction of travel arrow intersects the housing. And some of our compasses might have a little triangle there. Some of them have words that say, read here. They give you directions. So you read. So if you think of that yellow arrow as the flat part of the protractor, and the red and black, the magnetic needle, that's our baseline, we're going to measure clockwise from there to our direction of travel. This is our protractor being measured here. And then you read here. In this case, it's about 60 degrees. That's how you take a bearing with a compass. That's a review of January. Questions? Okay. Here's a review of February. February, we did the same thing, but we're taking a bearing off the map. So it's the same three letters, P-A-N, because we're taking a bearing. When you take a bearing, the first thing you do is you point. Then you align, then you read the number. So in this case, we want to go from point A on the map to point B. So we're going to take our compass, we're going to use one of those long straight edges of the compass and connect those dots, if we can. In this case, we can. A and B fit on my compass. If was, B was way down here, you would just have to aim the side of the compass towards it. So that's the first step is point. Make sure your direction of travel arrow is pointing from A to B. Otherwise, you're going to be going backwards. Okay. So that's the first step is point. The second step is align. So we're going to be aligning. Same thing. We are going to turn. Oh, I should follow that. Align the orienting arrow, which is this one. Do you notice the magnetic needle is gone in this picture? Because when we're doing it on the map, just ignore that magnetic needle. You can rip that baby out of your compass because that's not your baseline. Your baseline is true north, which on a topo map is indicated by the vertical sides of your map. The vertical sides of the topo map point to north at the top. So our north is up there. So what we're going to do is we're going to align this arrow to our edge of the map by turning the housing, just like we did before. Now you might say, how do I line that up over there with this thing that's over here? You gotta eyeball it, okay? Unless before you left home, you drew a whole bunch of vertical lines on your map, so there'd be one closer to where your compass is. So we're gonna turn the housing until the orienting arrow is aligned with north, right? Make sure the north end of your orienting arrow points in the same direction as the north end of your map. Otherwise, again, you'll be going in the wrong direction. And then, 
You read the number at the same spot. So do you see the difference between what we covered in January and what we covered in February? It's the same steps, point aligned number. The alignment is the same, except for what you're aligning to. With the compass, we were aligning to the magnetic needle because that's our baseline in the real world. On the map, we're aligning to true north because that's the baseline on the map. How do you use them together? That's why we're here tonight. That's what we're going to talk about. Questions or comments? Jokes about the PowerPoint slides? Not yet? Okay, so what's the difference between the two norths? I think this map right here sums it up. That's true north. It exists where all the longitude lines come together at the top of the globe. This is magnetic north. It's created from the northern end of the Earth's magnetic core. It's west of Baffin Island. So the map is taking a bearing to this line. The compass is taking a bearing to this line. The difference between the two is called declination. That says they're about 1,400 miles apart. So whenever we're taking a bearing, we should think about which one we're taking a bearing to. I think this picture, I know it helped me a lot, being able to visualize that in order to figure out how the solutions work. I'll, I'll bring that picture back a lot. Does that make sense? Two different norths? And that's the problem. The problem is we have two baselines. So if you take a bearing to the orange, the magnetic north, and try to use it with the apple, true north, you're going to have fruit juice, otherwise known as error in your direction. Now, by the way, if you choose not to have any error, or very little error, move to Chicago. Because about where those two points line up is about where Chicago, actually Chicago, I looked it up on the internet because I thought somebody, might be a Boy Scout in the room that calls me on this. Chicago is actually 3.6 degrees <laughs> declination. Um, but yes, there is some point in there where there is no declination error that you need to worry about because those two lines are going to be on top of each other. So if you took this point down here and you moved it further west, eventually those two lines would be on top of each other and that would be zero declination. So if you don't like tonight's topic, move. <laughs> So here's a direction of travel error. Here's our problem. If I take a bearing based on true north, so the bearing is from here to here. I don't know if I, I can't remember if I, ah, good, I did. So if I took a bearing from true north, then the angle would be this angle right here. But then if I want to use it from magnetic north, uh, there would be some error. Because if I took this angle off of this line, would you agree that this line right here would be more this way? Right? Or vice versa. I took the angle, measured the angle off of here, and then I applied it to something using the baseline of true north, then this line would be over here. So that's where, that's our problem. So which baseline is used? I've mentioned this many times. When you're in the surrounding world using the compass, trying to take a bearing, it uses magnetic north. If you're taking it off a topo map, it uses true north. So it's good to know which baseline you're using. So when do we have a problem? Well, if you and I went to Menden Ponds Park and we were playing, I always like to tell people, go out and play pan and nap. One of you close your eyes. The other take a bearing to something, find something interesting. You take a bearing to Jackson, that's interesting. <laughs> and then you give it to the other person whose eyes were covered and you say, here's the bearing, now you tell me what I was looking at. And they'll take the bearing and they'll adjust some stuff and they'll go, oh, you're looking at Jackson. So I recommend you go out and play pan and nap. It's a great way to uh, practice this. Pan is how you take a bearing, point aligned line number, nap, Reverse of those three letters is how you use a bearing. First you dial in the number, then you align you with the compass, and then you're pointing where you need to go. So if we're playing pan and nap, and somebody takes a bearing using a compass, what's the baseline on compass? 
and I get my credit card, and they give it to somebody to use on a compass, no problem, right? Baseline is the same. Magnetic north, magnetic north, no problem there. If you then played pan and nap using a map, by the way, I have to tell you, pan and nap, you can do it in the living room too. So you had to do it with their 10 year old nephew on a rainy day. You send them to the kitchen, we take a bearing to like the TV, have them come back in and tell them what the bearing was, and he had to figure out what we were looking at in the living room. Great way to entertain them on a rainy day. Worked well. But if you take the bearing off the map and use it on a map, is there a problem there? No, because it's true north to true north, so no problem there. This is where there's a problem. If you go and take the bearing off the compass in the real world and lay it that on the map to determine where you're going on the map, that's a problem. Because that one uses magnetic north, this one uses true north. Two different baselines. Or vice versa, take it off the map, a bearing, and attempt to use the bearing in the real world, again, there's a problem. So can you picture this in your head on where the problem would be? So that scenario up there, you're taking the bearing off this line, and then you attempt to use it on this line. So if you took a bearing, and if you took this arc right here and applied it to this line, you would be heading further east. Okay, so if you can keep this picture in your head, I think it helps sort out what the problem is. Do you agree? Okay. That was the right answer. You guys passed it. Okay, so declination is um, the difference between true north and magnetic north. It's the amount we need to adjust by when we're measuring an angle from two different baselines. How do you find out what it is? On the top of map, there's usually this cute little picture somewhere on the bottom in the legend of the top of map that shows you true north, that's the star, and magnetic north, and then the declination. If you notice that, don't ask me what GN is. It's great north and I have no idea what it is. So we're just focusing on MN for magnetic north, and true north is a star. If you notice, that kind of matches that picture I'm showing you. Hmm? Nope, it's grid north. GN is grid north. So it matches the picture. But this only works, this picture and this picture is for being if you're in the east, which is confusing because they call it western declination. So maybe because magnetic north is west, a true north? Yeah? That was a good guess. I just made that up. This is eastern declination. So I guess I have this over in California somewhere. And there's true north and there's magnetic north. So this would be eastern declination. So now magnetic north is east of true north. Okay? So that, that's our problem. We just talked about the problem. Everybody comfortable with understanding of the problem? Okay, so how do we use declination to adjust? This is where you have five solutions. Each solution has advantages and disadvantages. No one solution is better than the other solution. Find the one that you're most comfortable with and go with it. Or move to Chicago. Okay, so here are the five solutions. I'll give you a chance to read them. That's also in your handout. Each one of those is different from the others, so you're going to find one that you like better than the other. Notice out of them, one uses a map to magnetic north, all the rest are using maps to true north. Okay, so let's take a look at each one of them in, in detail. So here's the first one. First one says, use a map that references magnetic north, such as an orienteering map. So this is the orienteering map for um, Menden Ponds Park. When you take a bearing off of this map, you would take a bearing to one of these lines with, that are drawn, and those lines are to magnetic north. So no problem, because if I took a bearing off of this, it will be to magnetic north, 
And then if I use that bearing to adjust myself physically in the real world, using the compass, that would also be to magnetic north. So there's no fruit juice. It's magnetic north to magnetic north. So people that are in orienteering competitions and such, they don't need to mess around with declination. They got their map on that little holder in front of them, they take their bearing to it, and they head off into that direction, and they don't have to think about how do I have to adjust for declination. So this is a good way to do it. Here at Lincoln Park, we could use this to take a bearing and, and then follow it. Can you see a disadvantage of using this? Right. There's not an orienteering map for everywhere in the world. So yes, this will work in some situations, and when it does, you can buy the map and have it. So the disadvantage is you have to buy the map. Well, I guess we always have to buy a map anyway, so that's not too much of a problem. But then there isn't one for like uh, how to run the wilderness up in the Adirondacks. So you still need to know one of the other four ways to do it. By the way, here's back my little diagram showing you that there'd be no problem because you would take the bearing off the map to magnetic north, and then when you use it in the compass, you'd be using it based on the baseline of magnetic north. So this solution eliminates declination altogether. You just use a different map. Okay, next solution is use a map that references true north, like this top of map. This is the top of map of Linden Pond Park also. So you can see the 100 acre pond here. Um, use a map that references true north. So this edge right here is pointing up to true north. And orient the map to magnetic north. So that means taking the map, laying it on the ground, and orienting it so that it is actually set up to point to magnetic north. So now you might be wondering, how do you do that? These steps, by the way, are on the last page of your handout, I believe. So you don't have to memorize them. So the first thing you do is you take your compass. So pretend this map is laying on the ground in front of you. You take your compass and set it on the map, and you dial in the decl declination amount. So the declination for Menden Ponds Park is 10 degrees. I love teaching a workshop in Menden Ponds Park, because 10 degrees is easy to work with. So we dial in 10 degrees. So this yellow arrow is my um, orienteering arrow, which by default points to zero on the compass housing. So you can see I'm offset a little bit. That's to 10 degrees here. So my green here and marker is pointing to 10 degrees. Then it says line up the edge of the compass with the printed uh, map edge. So I'm taking the long edge of my compass, lining up the compass edge with the map edge. So what I'm going to do here is use the compass to align the whole map to magnetic north. And then step number three says hold the compass and map together, and then you turn them both together. So you don't lose this alignment here. And you turn them both until this arrow is underneath the magnetic needle. So in this case, we would be taking the map and the compass and turning it this way. So that map and compass together would keep going until these two girls line up. And then the map will be oriented to magnetic north. Then you can put your compass on point A and point B on the map, on the ground there, and take a bearing, and the bearing you read will be uh, to magnetic north, because you would not align your compass to this edge when you take the bearing you will align the compass to magnetic north. So, for example, if I had point A here and point B here, I would do what we saw in a prior slide. You would connect the two with the edge of the compass, and then you would turn the housing, but you would not turn the housing until this arrow lined up with the edge of the map. You would turn the housing until this arrow lined up with magnetic north, because the whole map is oriented to magnetic north now that you can take the reading up um, using the compass. Okay. Um, I was going to say something else. Got ahead of myself. So what this solution does is it eliminates true north. You orient the whole map to magnetic north, and then you just take the bearing as if you were taking the bearing with the compass. 
aligning to the magnetic needle, not to the edge of the map. Now you might say, wait, wait a minute, Barb, you just said line it up to the edge of the map. We line the compass up to the edge of the map to do what? To orient the map so that the map is positioned as if it was uh, sitting in the real world in the correct direction. And then the compass can come away from this edge and be used to connect your point A and point B together and then use the magnetic needle to, to take your bearing. Believe it or not, this is all in the hand up. So when you go home tonight, you need some sleeping material. Just review the hand up. Okay? Then wake up and review it again. Yeah. Oh, box. Box means you're going to turn the housing until this arrow is boxed by this arrow. Overlay one to the other. Yeah, the yellow arrow is the one painted on the bottom of the housing, and when you turn the housing, it moves. And then to box it, you're actually turning the housing until that painted arrow is directly underneath the floating magnetic needle. Did that help, Cindy? Rich here. Thank you, Rich. Rich uh, from Expo. Expo bought this so I can teach the Compass Workshop at the Expo. So, in this demo, see this painted arrow that's turning as I turn the housing? That one right there. This arrow is my floating needle. Box means keep turning the housing until that painted arrow is right underneath the north end of the magnetic needle. We, that's what people mean when they say box the needle. Okay. Did that help? Thank you, Rich. Oh, sorry. Every time I do this, I get better hints. Okay. So, uh, what do you think the advantage or disadvantage of this is? Let's go with advantages. What do you think an advantage of this would be? Well, maps oriented to the real world. Yeah. Maps oriented to the real world, so you can eliminate worrying about true north. Very good well, advantage. You can also use it when you're looking at it. You stand on one side of the map and look across it and see the hill, you can see the hill. Yeah, good point. So if you've got the map laying down and you're behind point A and you're looking directly towards something, it'll be lined up with the map. You can see right on the map where it would be. Perfect alignment. Yes? In the, in the real world, you probably have your map in the, your back or your pocket. And while you think you have to put it like right in the shed, box it. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it's like, oh, you should just follow the point. On the compass. But that's once you've done this technique, because as soon as you put your map in the pocket, this technique is hosed. This only works if you open up your map, you lay it down on the ground, you orient it with this compass, and then you take your bearing while it's laying on the ground. As soon as you move that map, or pick it up and put it in your pocket, this technique's not going to work. Once you take the bearing off the map, yes, yes. Once you take the bearing from the map that's laying on the ground, then you can put the map away and follow it on your compass. Yes, that's our goal. What's a big disadvantage of this technique? I'll give you a hint, it sounds like this. Ooh. Oh, that's a ghost. Sorry. Wind, right? So, you, try, you ever try laying down the top of the map on top of one of the high peaks on a breezy day? Or how many flat spots do you have around you? So you need a flat spot and you need something where it's not going to blow away. So maybe you put the map down, you orient it, you put rocks on it, and then you take your bearing. Okay, but it works. It works. My sister went through Outward Bound, and this is the technique they use the whole time in Outward Bound. She, she can do this very quickly. 
just if, uh, I guess in Outward Mountain, you have extra people on your, uh, your team, your group, to hold down the edges while you're taking the bearing. Okay, this is technique number three. Number three is use a map that references true north, like a topple map. This again is a topple map for Brendan Ponds Park. And then draw lines on it before you leave home. Draw lines on it for magnetic north. And then you've kind of turned it into like an orienteering map because now you have the magnetic north lines on it. So when you go to take your bearing, you take your bearing based on the magnetic north lines, which in this case are these diagonals here that are about one inch apart on the map. And notice that this edge of the map is true north and this is magnetic north that kind of looks like the angle we would expect, right? True north should be, I'm sorry, let me do it this way. Magnetic north should be west of true north when you're in the east of the United States. So you do this before you leave home. Lay it on your dining room table, kitchen table. Use a protractor or your compass. I'll show you how to use a compass in just a moment. Draw the lines and then you're good to go. Take all your bearings to the diagonal lines uh, out in the field versus to the edge over here, and then you don't have to do anything with declination. You did all the work before you left home. You just take your bearing to these lines now. Okay, so how can you use the compass to act like a protractor? Because some of you might want to do this technique, but maybe you don't have one of those plastic protractors from math class. So it says you can use your compass to act like a protractor, because it really it is a protractor. So what you do is you take the amount of declination, and it says subtract it from the amount, uh, subtract the declination amount from 360. And I put in parentheses, I know this is weird, but do it. You subtract. So if we're at Menden Ponds Park and it's 10 degrees, this is where I love that it's 10 degrees, because 10 degrees from 360 is 350. Easy to do the math. So that's the amount that you then want to dial into your compass. So you dial in 350. And if you want to, if you're questioning why did you subtract it? Well, if this is pointing to true north, where should magnetic north be in reference to true north? Over here, right? So you can kind of see the V. So then we're going to take this and we're going to line it up to true north. There's our protractor. So we're lining this up to our baseline, true north, and that, oops, sorry, I said that wrong, didn't I? No, no, I did say it right. We're aligning the orienteering arrow to true north, which then makes the compass slightly cockeyed, because remember this was offset from 360, and now this edge is the edge you can use to draw your line. So use that edge to draw your first line because it gave you your angle, and then get out the yardstick and draw the other lines before you leave home, and then you're all set to go. So what this does is it eliminates true north at home. And when you go to take your bearing out in the field, out in the real world, take it off of this line, off the diagonal line because that's magnetic work, and then you don't have to do anything else to handle the difference. Disadvantage there is you have to do something before you leave home. You gotta draw lines on your map. But I, I do know some friends, and that's what they do. They draw all the lines on their top of maps before they leave home, and then they're good to go. They don't have to worry about declination from that point forward. So in this case, we're changing the map, almost making it like an orienteering map. An orienteering map is oriented to magnetic north, we just made our topo map now be oriented to magnetic north by drawing our own lines. Okay? So three solutions so far. One, buy a different map, an orienteering map. Two, what was two? Nope, that's three. What was two? Oh, two is the one on a windy day. It doesn't work very well. you got to move the whole map, lay it down on the ground, and then move the whole map to orient it to magnetic north. And three is draw lines. So they all have their advantages and disadvantages. Number four is buy a different compass. So back here on number three, we took a map and we changed it to make it be magnetic north. What's the baseline of a compass by default? 
magnetic north. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a compass and we're going to alter it to make it be its baseline be true north. So then you can take a bearing off the map and use it right on the compass. Just make sure if anybody borrows your compass, you tell them that their compass is now messed up. Their compass is now to true north and not to magnetic north. So number three, we change the map. Number four, we're changing the compass. You might say, how do you change a compass? Well, first, check out your compass. See if it comes with a screwdriver. If it comes with a screwdriver, next thing to check for is to see whether or not it comes with a little screw. This compass, the screw is on the bottom side. I have another compass where the screw is on the top side. And you might need a magnifying glass to find that. So first look for a screwdriver and then look for the screw. And what you're going to do with that screwdriver and screw is you're going to change, by default, the orienteering arrow on the housing, the one that's painted on the housing, lines up with zero degrees on the dial, which is also north, right? Do you agree? This is what the compass looks like by default. The orienteering arrow lines up with north. You use that little screw to offset that. I know this picture is hard to see. I'm not a very good photographer. But I think you can probably see, see north there. See the painted arrow? Is the painted arrow pointing to north? No, because I used the little screwdriver and the little screw. And, and it also comes with a scale, which nowadays I need a magnifying glass to see. And it'll have east deck and west deck on it. So you know eastern versus western declination. And you basically adjust it so that offsets from north. And now this compass is set to true north. You take a bearing with this compass, the bearing you're taking is a true north bearing. When you read the number off the dial, the number will be a true north bearing, not a magnetic north bearing. So you've altered the compass to adjust for declination. Just a heads up. If you have a compass that has the declination scale on it, that does not mean it has the screwdriver and the screw. It just means they made the adjustable compasses and the non-adjustable compasses out of the same mold. And they saved a, a process. They put the scale on both those that are adjustable and non-adjustable. So look for the screw or the screwdriver. Or, recently, I got another compass, it looked like this, and I'm reading the directions for it, and I think on the packaging it said it's adjustable for declination. I'm like, cool. So I'm reading the directions and it says you can do it, and I'm like, how? There's no screwdriver and there's no screw. So I was perplexed. Well, it can. So here, if you see the orienting arrow, it's pointed to north. This is the same compass, it's been adjusted. See the orienting, orienting arrow is not pointing to north anymore? It's been adjusted. No screw or screwdriver in this one. In this one, what you do is you hold the center circle, this clear part, you hold it, and then you can move the base, this part here, and it actually offsets. It actually moves. If anybody wants to try it, I have it up here on the front, you can try it. And I know on January, I don't know if that person's here, somebody came with that compass. Was that the one that had the goop around me? No. Somebody had one and they're like, I, I, I don't know why it's um, sticky, it's got something on it. And it seemed like the lubrication around that housing was coming out. And, uh, but if you get one that looks like this, it's adjustable for declination also. I'm just thinking this one's going to wear out much quicker than the screw and the screwdriver. Questions about that? So in this one, we change the compass. Just make sure you changed it. Make sure you remember that you changed it. Because it now measures to true norm. So this is our solution that shows us that we're changing the compass to no longer measure to magnetic north, but to measure to true north. Okay, so then you can use it with the bearing off a map, and you got apples to apples. Okay, the disadvantage here is you have to pay a little bit more for a little fancier compass. And you also have to remember that you offset your compass if you change it. 
This is my favorite one, and that's why it's last. Because I don't have to buy anything extra, I don't have to do anything extra ahead of time, I don't have to hold the math down so it doesn't blow away. I just have to do math. That's why I like Linda Pons Park, because I can work with 10 degrees easily. But um, this one, you can just do it in your head as long as you don't panic at math. It's actually an easy solution. So what you do is you get a topo map that's to uh, magnet, or sorry, to true north, and you take your bearing off your map. So like we said before, you connect point A to point B, you turn the housing until your uh, orienting arrow is lined up with the edge of the map. Remember when you take it off the map, you do it to the edge of the map. Your alignment is to the edge of the map. So let's take, say we take the bearing 50 off our map. Now we want to come and use it in the real world. What you do is you add the declination to your bearing. When you're going from the map to the compass, you add. So if I'm taking 50 degrees off the map, I add my 10 degrees declination, the bearing I should use on my compass is 60 degrees. I put this on here to show that it makes sense. If I took a bearing off of here to my direction of travel and it's 50 off the map, then don't you agree that it should be larger if you're going to use it on the compass where the baseline is magnetic north? So if you measure 50, you add on the declination uh, amount and you get 60 and that's the bearing that you need to use on the compass. Okay? If you're going the other way, if you take a bearing in the real world using your compass and you get 60 degrees and now you want to use that bearing over here, you know you're at point A and you want to figure out where that thing you were looking at over here is on the map from point A, then you would dial in 50 over here. You take the 60, you subtract 10, and you use 50 on the map. And that compensates for the declaration. So now you might be saying, I don't remember what I'm supposed to add and what I'm supposed to subtract. Well, this picture might help you remember. If you take it from true north to your bearing, and then you want to use it to magnetic north, you have to add because you want to go to this line. And if you take it off magnetic north to your bearing and you want to use it on true north, then you subtract because it should be smaller. On the other hand, we might not remember that at all. So here's a diddly that somebody told me that helps to remember. How many letters in map? Mm -hmm. How many letters in compass? And if you went from that number of letters to this number of letters, would you add or subtract? You would add. When you go from map to compass, you add. When you go from compass to map, you... Okay. Unless you go west of Chicago. Right? If you go on the other half of the United States, you have to stand on your head when you do that diddly, because it would be the opposite. Okay? But that's how I remember it. Number of letters, you add, and it works. Okay? We have looked at five solutions to one problem. The problem is we have two baselines, and depending on what we're using, dictates which baseline we use to measure our angle. But if we need to use it with the other baseline, we have to adjust for the declination. The handout I gave you has this obnoxious table in it, in addition to this table. Let me mention what this is. Um, let's see. Okay, so the first one in the right hand corner has a picture of a map, and then an arrow, and then a compass. What that's saying is, how do we take a bearing from a map, and then use that bearing on a compass? point us to the direction we want to go to in the real world. Each one of these lines is one of those five solutions I showed you, broken down in detail on how to use it. It tells you what you have to do ahead of time. It tells you what needs to be done at the time of taking the bearing. It tells you how to do the P point. It tells you how to do the A align, and align, and align. Align takes up three columns. And then it tells you what the N is. 
So for each one of the solutions uh, to declination. Then the next grid is what if you're going from the real world? So you take a bearing with a compass and you're going to use that bearing in a map. So again, it has each one of the columns that break it down into detail. So this is the type of thing that you have to sit down and digest. You can get a cup of coffee and a nice stone and sit in front of it and chew on the stone while you're processing it. But everything I've shared with you is in here. In addition, the last page uh, has the details that I shared with you on how to draw the lines on the map using the compass as your protractor or to uh, lay the map down on the ground and use the compass to orient it or to uh, how to adjust your compass. So that's what's on the last page. And then the first page describes the uh, problem. So in, in summary, when we take a bearing, we need to know which baseline. That's why in January and February I kept emphasizing we're taking a bearing to a baseline. I didn't say specifically to magnetic north or true north, but to the baseline. So you have to keep in mind which baseline you're taking your bearing to when you're using the compass or when you're using the map or an orienteering map. And then sometimes we have problems. When we go to take a bearing from something that uses magnetic north baseline to something that uses true north, we have a problem. Or vice versa, we have a problem. If we're being consistent, compass to compass in the real world, or off the map, onto the map, then there's no problem, because you're consistent with your baseline. And then we talked that there are five different solutions on how to handle it. So review the solutions, think about which one you like best. Maybe you like orienting the map on top of the mountain. Maybe you like drawing the lines before you leave. Maybe you like offsetting your compass. Or maybe you like doing map. But there's five different ways that you can handle the one problem of declination. Okay. Questions or comments? Very good. Thank you all for listening for three months. And a plug for the expo, if you want to do this hands-on, um, or hear it again, I'll be doing expo, uh, workshops at the expo on Compass.